lecture five, page seven, example. Let's read it, okay? Assume that fasting serum cholesterol levels in U.S. women aged 21 to 40 are normally distributed with a mean of 190 milligrams per deciliter and standard deviation 40. So I wrote here X for U.S. women is normal with mean 190 comma sigma equals 40. It is unknown whether cholesterol levels among recent Asian immigrants are higher or lower than those in the general U.S. population. So basically we're looking to see if cholesterol levels among Asians is the same as the U.S. cholesterol level or different, okay? Blood tests are performed on 200 female Asian immigrants. Sample size equals 200, N equals 200. Age 21 to 40. And the mean level is found to be 181.52. X bar 200 equals 181.52 milligrams per deciliter. The standard deviation is known to be 40. Sigma equals 40 is given. This is for the Asian women. See, the reason why I put that in bold, you see on this page seven, in bold writing it says the standard deviation is known to be 40. Sigma equals 40. This clues me into the fact that I'm going to be doing a Z test, not a T test because I use Z when sigma is known, right? So sigma equals 40. Test the null hypothesis that the mean is 190. This is for Asians now, not for US. Test that the mean is 190 versus the alternate hypothesis that the mean is not equal to 190. So this will be a two-sided test. Let's as though this is pretending that we don't know that cholesterol levels among Asians is lower than that of US women. We know that the Asian diet is better, okay? So the cholesterol levels are probably lower, but suppose we don't know that. So this is just saying test to see if the cholesterol levels are the same versus not the same. So this would be a two-sided test. That means that there will be two rejection regions. And that means that I will have to split my alpha. Split the alpha. Follow? So now I have two rejection regions. I took that alpha equals 0.05 and I split it into two pieces. 0.025 and 0.025 on each side. Are you with me? So the first thing I do is I go to my T table to look up the critical value. Let's do that right now. Could you pull out your T table, please? Since this is a Z, I'm gonna go to the last line of the T table. Go ahead, pull out your T table because we need to look up these critical values. So critical values from last line of T table. So I look up half of the alpha because I want to look up each tail, right? So 0 0.025 is what I look up, this column, 0 0.025 column. Because I have to split my alpha. 
So I look it up, I get 1.96, and so the other one is automatically minus 1.96 because of the symmetry. The mean is zero, so what happens on the right side is symmetric. It's, it's a reflection of what happens on the left side, except this one will be minus 1.96. That's the first thing you do, that's the critical values. Critical value marks the beginning of the critical or the rejection region. So that's the first thing I need to know. Then I need to take this X bar 200 and convert it to a Z value so that I can compare with these Z values. You can't compare X bar to Z, right? You gotta convert everybody to Z. So that's the next thing. The test statistic is called Z naught. And that is that formula that you already know, x bar minus mu over sigma over rad n. So I'm attempting to convert the x bar to z, which is what I did next. 181.52 minus 190. This mu always comes from h naught right here. So let us label that. This mu naught right here is what gets used here in every problem, okay? X bar minus mu naught divided by sigma, which was given, 40, divided by rad n rad 200. And when I clean this up, I get negative 3, which I have to go and I need to drop into this picture to see where it falls. That's the test statistic right here, negative 3. And because I fall in the left rejection region, My conclusion is going to be mu Asian women cholesterol is less than 190 because I fell in the left rejection region. So conclusion is reject H naught, that mu for Asian women is 190, in favor of HA. Whenever you reject H naught, you are always in favor of the alternate hypothesis. So I'm rejecting that mu for Asian women equals 190 in favor of mu Asian women not equal to 190 because I did fall in a rejection region, so I have to reject H naught. Furthermore, because I am in the left rejection region, I conclude that mu is less than 190 for Asian women. Get it? Get it? So this is an example of what we were talking about last time of this, right? Remember this? Fall in the left rejection region, you conclude mu is less than 6. Same thing from the previous time. If I had fallen in here, I would have said mu greater than 190, right? Yes, question? Can you split alpha if it's one-sided? No, if it's one-sided, you don't split alpha. Because on a one-sided test, there's only one rejection region. On a two-sided test, there are two rejection regions, so you have to split the total probability of type 1 error. Get it? Okay, any questions so far before we move on? So this is called the critical value method, right? This, this method that we did was the critical value method. Because I found the critical values right here, plus or minus 1.96. I converted my X bar to, the, to a test statistic and I compared to the critical value to see if I fall in the critical region or not. So critical value method is what we just did. And an alternate method for the same uh, problem because it's a two-sided test, is that I could have used the confidence interval as well. So here's the alternate method. 
alternately, alternate method is by confidence interval. And this I'm doing because it's two-sided. If it was not two-sided, I could not use the confidence interval method, right? Confidence interval is only for two-sided tests. So, first thing I have to do is find my alpha. Here we are. It said alpha equals 0.05. So I make note of that and therefore I find the 95% CI because 95 plus 5 makes 100. So if alpha is 0.05, then the 1 minus alpha is 95%. And I'm finding the 1 minus alpha CI for mu. And here's the formula. X bar N plus or minus Z sigma over rad N. Z alpha over 2 sigma over rad N. That's the formula for confidence intervals. X bar N plus or minus the error. So X bar is 181.52 plus or minus 1.96, I don't have to look it up again, it's already been looked up here, right? 1.96 is the Z alpha over 2. If I put, if I put the 0.95 in the middle, that would leave 0.25 and 0.25 on both sides, right? So it's the same number that I already know for the critical value, that's the same number. Don't have to look it up again, just take it from here, 1.96. Sigma 40 over rad n. Then I calculate the error. This, this part, the margin of sampling error, E, is this part. And that turns out to be 5.54. That's this purple area right here. Once I know that, I subtract that from x bar and I add it to x bar. If you recall, this is how we find confidence interval, right? You take x bar and you add E and you subtract E. And that's how you get the left end point and the right end point. So that's what I'm doing here. x bar plus minus E and x bar plus E. Right? And I get 175.98 comma 187.06. And then what remains to be done is to take the 190 from the H naught and drop it to see where it falls compared to this confidence interval. So here's the confidence interval here and the 190 falls outside. So I reject H naught because 190 falls outside the confidence interval. And since the entire confidence interval is to the left of 190, less than 190, I conclude that mu for Asian women is less than 190 because this entire confidence interval is to the left of 190. Are you following me? So it's the same conclusion that I got by the critical value method. Same conclusion. Here I fell in the left rejection region with my test statistics, so I concluded mu less than 190. Here the whole confidence interval was to the left of 190, so I concluded mu less than 190. So I've done this problem two different ways. What's your question? Are you confused? No? Okay, let's do the next problem. I'm going to come back. There's only one thing that I haven't done on this whole page and that is p-value. I'll come back after I teach you p-value. I just want to do a couple examples so that this stuff gets 
cemented in. Let's do the next one on page eight. Canis infection is a tick-borne disease of dogs that is sometimes contracted by humans. Among infected humans, the distribution of white blood cell counts has an unknown mean and standard deviation. In the general population, the mean white blood cell count is 7250 per cubic millimeter. Okay, so let me finish reading the problem. It is believed that persons infected with E. canis must on average have lower white blood cell counts. For a sample of 30 infected persons, the mean white blood cell count is 4767 and the standard deviation S equals 3204. Conduct a hypothesis test at the 1% level. Okay, so I'm basically looking to see H naught mu equals 7250 because I know that mu in the general population equals 7250. So I'm looking to see if the mu for infected persons is the same as the mu for the general population versus the alternate hypothesis that mu for infected persons is less than 7250. Because it says here, it is believed that persons infected must have lower white blood cell counts. Right? So, left-sided test. Are you in agreement? This makes it left-sided. For a sample of 30 persons, N is equal to 30, the mean white blood cell count is 4767. X bar 30 equals 47.67 and the standard deviation S equals 32.04. This time it's S, it's not sigma because this standard deviation was obtained from the sample of size 30. Therefore, it is called S, not sigma. Therefore, S, not sigma, right? It's a key difference because if you called it sigma, you would end up doing a Z test, not a T test, and that would be a problem, right? Okay, so we're going to do a T test. T because it is S that was given. S therefore T, right? Look in the alphabet, A, B, C, D, right? In our alphabet, it's P, Q, R, S, T, right? T comes right after S. That's a good way to remember. S therefore T test. S, T. S is followed by T, right? Every time it's S, you're going to do a T, okay? T with N minus 1 degrees of freedom. So this would be 
T29 degrees of freedom, right? High, uh, rejection region only on the left side. It's a left-sided test. Put the whole alpha in the left <clears throat> tail. What is alpha for this problem? Conduct a hypothesis test at the 1% significance level. So alpha equals 1%. Alpha equals 0.01. Alpha equals 0.01. Notice the whole alpha in the left tail, right? Let's go to 29 degrees of freedom on the T table and look up the critical value. You're going to go to the row for 29 degrees of freedom and the 0.01 column, right? Go ahead, tell me the critical value. Mm -hmm. 2.462, however, it's on the left side. So this is minus 2.462. You're going to put your own minus because the table doesn't give you any minuses, right? The center of the T distribution is at zero. So if you are in the left, if your rejection region is in the left tail, then it has to be negative. Your critical value has to be negative 2.462. Any questions so far? Yes, sir? It said conduct a hypothesis test at the 1% level. That's the last line of the problem. So I just copied it. If alpha were not given, suppose alpha were not given, the standard would have been 5%. Okay, should I put that down somewhere? Note, if no alpha given, you would have used 5% for alpha, but that's not the case here, okay? Not in this problem. They gave you alpha equals 0.01. Okay, so next thing is test statistic to see if I fall in the rejection region or not. So T naught equals X bar minus mu naught over S over rad N. You recognize this formula, right? It's the same as the Z formula, only I replace the sigma by the S. So when I do this, I get 4767 minus the mu, which comes from the null hypothesis, 7250, divided by S, 3204, over radical 30. Would you get me an answer for this, please? Point two four negative, right? Yes. Negative, right? Negative four point two four is T naught. Thank you. I go and I drop that. Where does this fall? Negative four point two four falls here. In the rejection region, right? You are past this number. Because as you go to the left, it gets more and more negative. So you are past this cutoff. So minus 4.24 falls in the critical, which is the same as the rejection region. So 
reject H naught in favor of H A. Whenever you reject H naught, you are in favor of the alternate. So we conclude that mu for infected persons is in fact less than 7250. 7250 was the count in the general population. Right? It's as simple as that. You get it? What's your question? So another way of saying this is that the test was statistically significant. Whenever you reject H naught, whenever you reject H naught, it's equivalent to saying the test was statistically significant. at alpha equals 0.01. When you do not reject H naught, it's like saying the test was not significant. Okay, <laughs> by significant I mean significantly different than stated in the null. That means reject H naught. You're rejecting the null because your results were statistically significant, meaning significantly different than what was stated in the null hypothesis. Follow? Any question? Can I use a confidence interval for this? No, it's not two-sided. So not two-sided. Do not use confidence interval, symmetric confidence interval for this, for this problem. Follow? Okay. Let's learn about p-values. So I'm on page 10. value. So depending on the side of the test, the p-value is defined differently. Let's say that I have a left-sided test, okay? Like the one I just did, right? The one I just did was left-sided, right? Left-sided test. The left-sided test means the rejection region is always in the left tail. This is alpha. The whole alpha is in the left tail. Two things can happen on a left-sided test. There are only two options, right? Either you end up in the rejection region. Either you end up in the rejection region like this with your test statistic, which is Z naught or T naught, or you don't end up in the rejection region. Those are the only two options on a left-sided test, correct? Look at what the p-value is, guys. This is the p-value. The p-value is a probability of being more extreme than the test statistic. That's the definition of p-value. P-value is the probability of being more extreme than the test statistic. More extreme means on a left-sided test you go more left. 
on a right-sided test, you go more right. On a two-sided test, you go more left or right depending on your test statistic where it falls and you multiply by two. I'm gonna get to that in a couple minutes. Let me just finish this properly. So here's my p-value. The probability of being more extreme than my test statistic. So this is a smaller p-value than alpha. Do you see that here? Look at the alpha region. This is, this is alpha. This much is alpha. This black stuff is alpha. Alpha. And the purple stuff is P. So on this picture, I'm comparing the two areas, P and alpha. Don't look at this number, okay? I'm not looking here. I'm looking at the area in the tail, right? P is, P value is an area. This is an area. So I'm looking at this area more extreme than the test statistic and I see that the p-value is small compared to alpha. So on this side, p is less than alpha. I'm comparing the purple area to the black area. Are you with me? Did you see that when you were here in this picture? p is less than alpha and you fell in the rejection region. Your test statistic lies in the rejection region, right? So your conclusion is going to be reject H0 because you are in fact in the rejection region. You fell here. This is where you fell with your test statistic. That's equivalent to saying p-value less than alpha because the only way the p is going to be less than alpha is if you are in the rejection region, right? On this, on the other hand, here, look at this purple area, how big it is. Here, P is greater than alpha. You are not, so Z naught, not in rejection region. So here, when P is greater than alpha, do not reject H naught. You have no business rejecting because your rejection, your rejection region starts here. This is alpha. So why would you reject? You are nowhere in the rejection region. That's equivalent to seeing, saying P greater than alpha. Look at the purple region, how big it is. P is bigger than alpha, so do not reject H naught. That's equivalent to saying you did not land in the rejection region. That's why your P is so big. Follow? <coughs> That's the, that's the basics. That was a left-sided test, right? Let's do a right-sided test. It's the same kind of thing. Here's a right-sided test. Entire alpha in the right tail. Only two things can happen. Either you are here, in which case your p-value is huge, P greater than alpha, comparing area, mind you, right? Do not reject H naught. Or this could happen. Z naught or T naught, it doesn't matter, right? Either way, whatever, whichever test you're doing. Here your p-value is small, your alpha is bigger, this is alpha. So p less than alpha here, reject H naught, because you are in the rejection region. Are you with me or what? I want to make sure. So it's like no big mystery, okay? It's just if you land up in the rejection region, then your p is going to be smaller than alpha, that's it. Two-sided test. Two-sided test. 
you first have to see which region you landed up in, okay? So let's say you have a two-sided test. This is alpha over two and this is alpha over two. You split your alpha, we know that. And let's say that you land up in here. Or you have a two-sided test and you land up not in the rejection region. but on the right side. Or two-sided test and you land up on the left side but not in the rejection region. Left side of zero, I mean, right? Or you have a two-sided test and you'll end up in here. Look at the p-value, okay? For a two-sided test, the p-value is twice the probability. Because I'm comparing, my goal is to compare the total p to the total alpha, right? So I'm comparing this p Except this is only half of P in a two-sided test because in a two-sided, look at the formula for, for the two-sided test. P-value is two times the probability that Z greater than or equal to Z naught if it's right, if it's on the right. So for these two pictures, right, for these two pictures, the top two pictures, my Z naught is positive. So let's, let me write that here, Z naught positive. So I'm going to go, since Z naught is positive, I'm going to go more positive than Z naught, more extreme. So if I land up here, my p-value is two times this area because I want to pick up the equivalent area on the other side too. That's why we're multiplying by two. Because after all, I'm comparing this to half of alpha or double of this to the whole of alpha, right? We're comparing P to alpha. So in the one tail, you're only talking about half the picture. So Z naught landed here, and my p-value is two times this area, two times the probability z greater than or equal to z naught. So it's this plus that. And the total purple area is still to less than the total alpha. So p less than alpha, as, as I can see here, p is half of p is half, less than half of alpha. So the total p is less than the total alpha. p less than alpha, reject h naught. Obviously reject because I'm in the rejection region. Here, this is the total P. This times two. So the equivalent area on the left side too. So I landed here. I took the probability of more than that, more extreme, and times it by two. That automatically means include the same area on the other side. So here P is greater than alpha because the alpha is just this plus this, black region. So P is bigger than alpha. I'm looking at area. So here you do not reject H naught, which is clear because I did not fall in the rejection region, which is the same scenario here. Here the P is the probability, here's Z naught, the P is the probability of being more extreme on the left side because Z naught is negative. Here Z naught is negative in these two pictures. So I want this times two. So also include the other area. You're getting it, right? 
and here it's this times 2. Here p is smaller than alpha, reject. Here p is greater than alpha, do not reject h naught. The rules are the same. The rules are given on the bottom of page 10. Can you look on the bottom of page 10, please? The rule is, if P is bigger than alpha, do not reject H naught. P less than or equal to alpha, reject H naught. Those rules should go on your index card. Any question about this? So wherever I land, I go more extreme on that side for a two-sided test and double it. If I land on the left, I go more extreme on the left and double it. If I land on the right, I go more extreme on the right and double it. On a right-sided test, you always go more extreme on the right. On a left-sided test, you always go more extreme on the left. Are you with me? Okay, so can we please go back and finish the p-value for the two problems that we have already done. Let me put those problems back up. I'm here. So if I had to color the p-value, this is what it would look like, right? Look, more extreme than the test statistic. And it's two-sided, so I have to double this area, right? So this plus the same area on the other side. So let me find some place to do this. Let me call this page 1B, 1A p-value. p-value equals 2 times the probability that z is more extreme than negative 3. Less than or equal to negative 3. Let's go to the z table. I'm here on the z-table at negative 3. Can you find me this area? Less than negative 3, z-table. I'm sorry? 0032? 0013, is that what you see? Okay, that sounds reasonable, right? Because it's so far out into the tail. 0 0.0013, but I have to multiply it by 2, right? Because it's, I need to include the other side also, because it's a two-sided test. So 2 times 0 0.0013 equals 0 0.0026. P-value equals 0 0.0026. Alpha was 0 0.05, P less than alpha, reject H naught, just as we said. Get it, right? So this is p-value for, what was this problem? Uh, Asian women problem, right? Asian women cholesterol problem. And now let's find the p-value for the other one. For this problem. And this is p-value for the infected, uh, what was it? E. canis, E. canis problem. 
right? So here my p-value looks like this. It was T, 29 degrees of freedom. And my T naught was here. T naught equals, what was it? Minus 4.24. So I'm looking for this one-sided only, right? I don't have to double it this time. So p-value equals probability t less than minus 4.24. So there are two ways to do this. First way is to approximate it using the t-table right? Because all I have is 29 degrees of freedom. I have only a certain number of values here, right? So let's go to 29 degrees of freedom row. And I see that 4.24 is off the chart. I'm looking here in 29 degrees of freedom. Go there and look at these values, right? The biggest value I see is 2.756. Do you see that in the 29 degrees of freedom row? So look at 29 degrees of freedom. The largest value that I see is minus, it, I don't see the negative, but it's minus 2.756. And that goes with the tail area of 0 0.005 because it's the last column, right? And I'm even further along than that. Minus 4.24 is here. And I'm looking for this. So my purple area is even less than 0 0.005. And that's my p-value. Do you see? That's all I got to go by is all those limited number of values on the t 29 degrees of freedom row. And since I'm off the, off the row, it's all past the biggest value on the chart, my p-value is even less than 0 0.005. Do you see that or no? Yes? Yes or no? There's also another way to do this and that is to uh, do it on your calculator. Let me see if If I go to second distribution, TCDF, you can go second distribution, TCDF, just like norm CDF, you can do TCDF, left end point, right end point. I don't have a mu and a sigma. That's for norm CDF, right? Instead of left endpoint, right endpoint, mu and sigma like we used to do, now it's left, left endpoint, right endpoint, degrees of freedom. Okay, so I could do TCDF. Left endpoint is minus infinity. Arbitrary left endpoint, because I'm all the way out here in the left tail. Right endpoint is minus 4.24, because I want to end up here, right? That's my right end point, minus 4.24. Degrees of freedom, 29. <coughs> Let's try that. Minus 100, minus 4.24. Make sure you use the right minus, which is the minus in the last row. Degrees of freedom, 29. Paste. I get some really tiny number, 0 0.0001. That's my p-value. Follow? That's the other way to do this problem. It's a very small p-value, so you would reject H naught. P is less than 
alpha in any case. So this is my estimate. My estimate is that P is less than the smallest value, which was 0 0.005. That's all I can do with the table. I can't do anything more than that. What's your question, guys? Let's learn how to do the whole entire hypothesis test on the calculator. It's just really simple. Stat test Z test or stat test T test. That's it. So I want to do both of them on the calculator. Okay, let's put the page one back up. Suppose I want to do this on the calculator. This one. Maybe I write this on the page 1B because there will be more room to write. I write it right here. This was a Z test, so I'm going to do stat test test Z test. Let's go there and put the numbers in. Stat test, z-test. Is it data or stats that we had in this problem? Stats. Data or stats, the answer is stats, right? Because they already gave us all this stuff. These are the stats that they're giving us right here. So I'm going to say stats. It was not raw data. Stats. So pick stats and hit enter. Mu naught equals 190. Mu naught equals 190. Let's put that in. Sigma equals 40. X bar equals 181.52. N equals 200. You have to pick the proper side of the test. It's asking you, is your test two-sided, left-sided, or right-sided? My test was two-sided, right? So I have to pick the first option and hit enter. The second option is for left-sided. The third option is for right-sided. If you pick the wrong side of the test, then everything will be wrong, right? Make sure. So I'm picking the two-sided option and then calculate. And it gives me everything. Look, it gave me Z equals minus 2.998. We got Z equals minus 3. So it gave me this value right here, right? And it even gave you the p-value. P, we got p-value equals 0 0.0026. The calculator answer was 0 0.0027. Agree? So it does, the calculator will do the whole thing for you. When you do the practice problems, you want to make sure you do by hand so you understand, okay? And then check with the calculator. Are you with me? What about checking the confidence interval for this problem? Can we check this confidence interval? I could have done stat test Z interval, right? Stat test Z interval. Go do it right now and get that interval, okay? Make sure it matches up. Because on a test, you're probably wanna, gonna wanna do this, right? But on calculator, so you wanna make sure that you're really proficient by hand and by calculator. Go ahead, stat, test, Z interval. All your information should already be in there. Stat, test, I'm going down to Z interval. 
I picked stats. Notice that all the stuff that you put in before is already there. You just want to pick the right confidence level to match the alpha. Alpha is 0.05, so you better do 95%. So 0.95, right? Right? And then calculate. It gives you 175.98 comma 187.06, just like we got. It spat out the p-value before when you did the test. Let's do the other one on the calculator. Which is page, page, uh, sorry, what page is it? Let's see. Page two, this one on the calculator. This one would be stats, test, t-test. Stat, test, t-test. Data or stats? Do it with me, guys. Stat, test, t-test. Is it data or is it stats? Stats. Right. Mu naught equals 7250. This is mu naught. Always comes from H naught. Mu naught comes from H naught, 7250. X bar, 4767. S, 3204. N, 30. Left sided test, so you want to pick the second option, right? Make sure. Hit enter, go down, hit calculate. P-value um, 1.02 times 10 to the negative 4. We got a very small p-value also. Of course, we didn't get the exact p-value. We just got an estimate using the table, right? Yes or no? And the test statistic is minus 4.24, just like we got here. So everything's good. Matches with the calculator. Get it? All right, let's see if there's anything else to be done. 1A, 1B, 2, 3. What's the next problem that we should do? Let's see. How about the page 12 problem? Page 12. Let's do it by hand. We'll check it by the calculator, okay? Suppose 